Welcome, everyone, to another edition of the podcast. John Stanko here with Mike Ritz predicting the Week 9 games for the NFL. Both of us did pretty solid last week, but Mike Ritz, you were on fire with your picks. <laughs> Even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while, Stanko. Uh, yeah, this was certainly certainly a good week for me, a must-needed week. Yeah, you went 12-1 and one in the picks. You picked Atlanta in the podcast, but then after, you're like, no, 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 I'm switching my pick, Arizona. <laughs> I'll give you credit for it. You went 12-1. and one. I went you. I went 10-3, and three, which seems okay, and totally look at your record. Uh, I'm still one game up on you for the year, but still a long season to go, more than halfway to go. Uh, I'm 79-41. and 41. Mike is 78-42. and 42. So let's delve right into Week 9, the Thursday night game, Cincinnati and Miami. Who you got? Uh, I will go with the Bengals. I think Miami is struggling right now, um, and I guess the I guess the argument's going to be, well, how many games are are the Dolphins going to lose in a row? But I really don't see the Dolphins coming out on top here. Uh, I think Andy Dolan is playing out of his mind. He's playing his best football of his career right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's playing scary, scary, scary football as a quarterback, um, and I think AJ Green is is too good of a receiver. Um, so. I am worried about. I, I'm always worried about the away team traveling on a Thursday night game. Yeah. Maybe they'll, they're a little sluggish in the first half. But uh, personally, I have Cincinnati winning this game. Yeah, Andy Dalton's been absolutely on fire. The Bengals have scored 103 points the past three games. Andy Dalton, 11 touchdowns over those three games, over 320 y- over 325 yards each of those three games. He's playing the best football of his career. And who was Marvin Jones? Had four touchdown receptions. Who is out of his mind? I played out of his mind last week. Four touchdowns. Uh, Calvin Johnson-esque. Yes, Calvin Johnson-esque. <laughs> but no one's going to match what Calvin Johnson did. We're going to get into that. Uh, but All right, so we both agree. I got the Bengals, too. Listen, Miami, they really, the second half against New England, uh, I mean, they had so much momentum, and they were up big, and they were controlling the game. And then the last, I'd say, 20 minutes of the game, Miami fell apart. And that's not going to bode well going against a team, Cincinnati, that beat New England and isn't playing one of the best football in the NFL. Yeah, Miami is struggling. Uh, this will be five in a row if they lose. Yep. They start off 3-0, and going to lose the next five. That is tough. All right, well, let's go. Then we got Miami. I mean, they're 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 struggling, but we got a team here that's chippy and this, does, this doesn't like to lose. We got the Buffalo Bills <laughs> home at Ralph Wilson Stadium going up against the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs. Kind of squeaked by the Cleveland Browns. Uh, the, the Chiefs are not blowing anyone out. But they're still undefeated. Who you got? Kansas City going to Buffalo. Oh, I'm, I was so tempted all week when I looked at this game. Uh, I think last Sunday we were looking at the next week's picks, mm-hmm. and we said this was going to be uh, an interesting game to pick. I am going to bail out and go with the Chiefs. Um, I really sell out. I sell really out. think that um, Alex Smith is a smart quarterback. Um, Thad Lewis, the Duke alum from the from the Bills who has come in and played pretty well. Um, he's still a game-time decision, so with him not being healthy, that's also a red flag for the Bills. Fred Jackson has run the ball very well, um, with C.J. Spiller being out. But um, I see this game being close. I think the Chiefs are going to uh, close this one out at the end. Uh, I see this being about a field goal or a six-point game. I don't know about you, Johnny, but um, I think that Kansas City it plays too smart, too reserved. Um, their defense did not necessarily play very well last week. Mm-hmm. I, I see them kind of, kind of bouncing back and showing up against the Bills. And, uh, yeah, I think Kansas City is going to move on to 9-0. Yeah, uh, I think if EJ Manuel is playing this game, I think the Bills have a legit shot the way their team's been playing. Uh, they're playing really well. Uh, they're Again, they're scrappy. They don't get blown out. And Kansas City doesn't blow teams out. I, again, I think it'll be less than a touchdown. I think it'll be the difference. Fred Jackson's running really well. Jamal Charles sat out practice on Wednesday, uh, but it's only precautionary. It's only precautionary. He's going to play on Sunday. Uh, but again, listen, this is going to be a tight game. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, frankly. Uh, but I, I, again, I have Kansas City pulling it out. But listen, Kansas City is atop everyone's power rankings, and they're even a top mine. But I'm not comfortable with them up there because... As, as they're undefeated, they still haven't played anyone that great, and they don't look that impressive offensively in their wins. They always, they always play well defensively in the fourth quarter, but it's the first three quarters where they, where they let the teams get close. It's, it's what scares me. Uh, but again, Kansas City, I think they're going to prove to 9-0. I think there are a bunch of teams that are better than Kansas City. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I put the Saints above the, the Chiefs. I oh, put, I, I do too. I obviously do too. put the Broncos ahead. Um, I think the Seahawks-Kansas City would be a, would, would be a tough game. 
I would even throw like you think the Packers can beat the beat the Chiefs, you know, the Colts, teams yeah. like that. I think the I think the Chiefs are um they're playing their schedule and they're winning the games on their schedule, so there's nothing more you can ask really mm-hmm. of them. But they are on a dominant, dominant team, which is why games like this are sometimes questionable to pick, especially playing at the Mecca. But um I I uh, I'm surprised I'm surprised at myself I'm not picking Buffalo here, but I think I really think Kansas City will go nine now. Yeah, a great stat for this game. Jamal Charles on my fantasy team going up against Mike again this week. Oh man. Ran for three hundred and seventy six yards and averaged seven point two yards a carry in his past three starts against Buffalo. Uh so I mean he gets a lot of yards against Buffalo, so hopefully that turn will continue. Uh, for the sake of my fantasy team, which has won six straight games. Well, it's good that uh, he got all out of his system, and he's going to get the goose egg this week. We'll see what happens. But moving forward, uh, we got another game. We got a team uh, that's coming off of um, a tough loss, Minnesota, 1-6. Um, they're going up against Dallas, who had a heartbreaking loss to Detroit. Uh, and, they, they, I mean, Dallas defensively just could not stop Megatron. Just n- frankly, nobody could, but Dallas was the t- there was a team on the field trying to. Uh, Dallas is hosting Minnesota. I think this is a pretty easy one uh, for, uh, for for the week. Yeah, I'm definitely picking Dallas. Uh, Minnesota is so bad. Um, next to Adrian Peterson, I really don't think th- uh, they really don't have anybody. Um, their quarterback, their quarterback is each week. You never know who it's going to be. Is it going to be Ponder? You know, if Freeman, who is who is going to start for this team? Mm-hmm. Um, and that obviously does not. Bold well. Um, they kind of hung in there. I'm surprised they scored 31 points last week. Yes, um, yes, they did yes. With a, with, with a terrible offense, they put up 31 points. Granted, seven of it was a 109-yard kickoff return to start, to start off the game. Off the game. Um, but, yeah, their defense is too bad. I think the Cowboys' offense is has shown that they are they are very good. Um, the whole controversy with Dez, I think it'll it'll level out. Yeah. I think And Dez has played fantastic all, all year. Romo's had a pretty good year. DeMarco Murray is is set to be back. He'll run, he'll play well. It's against the Minnesota defense. I really don't see a Dallas losing this one at all. Yeah, a uh, great stat um, is that Minnesota allows teams to convert on third down fifty one percent of the time. Ouch! You are if you don't get off the field, you're not going to win games. Um, and listen, uh, Frazier has not decided who's playing Christian Ponder or Josh Freeman. Oh, he has he has eliminated Matt Castle from the equation, so at least it's stepping. A stepping stones. <laughs> um, but I mean, listen, uh, Minnesota, you're gonna you already match the total of losses you had last season already, and you have no signs looking forward right now. They're gonna be a top five pick in the draft. Uh, start looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's definitely for sure. But going into this next game, Johnny Stank, one that is probably one of the tougher games to pick mm-hmm. in the Tennessee Titans. Mm-hmm. Who are always up in the air? Mm-hmm. Um, take it on the St. Louis Rams put up a valiant effort yes. against the Seahawks last week. Um, to, to much of our surprise, I, I mean, I, I had that game being a blowout. Mm-hmm. Um, I did too. I did too. Where was on the goal line? I was on the two yard line to end the game. I had a very good chance of being with some say the best team in football. Johnny Stink, the St. Louis Pulse went out. Yes, they do. Yes, Woo-hoo. they do. At home, they do. Uh, listen, if they had a, if they had a good quarterback last week. Uh, they would have won that game against Seattle. Kellen Combs was overthrowing people like no other's, like nobody's business. He didn't play that well, frankly, and they were still in the game. Uh, they're run- Zach Stacy ran really, really well. But again, St. Louis in the red zone has to do something. They're the only team in the NFL to not have a rushing touchdown, and we're heading into Week Nine. Uh, that's just that's not good. Um, and listen, the Titans, I, uh, they are three and four. I don't think they're much better than the Rams. The Rams are at home. Uh, and I think the I think the crowd will be a little bit more ramped up this game because last home game against Seattle it was the World Series so nobody was there nobody was amped up because they were watching the Cardinals this week they'll have some enthusiasm. Uh, tickets for that St. Louis Rams game that Monday night game were going for seven dollars a piece on wow. StubHub. Wow! Like that's how much people didn't want to go to the game. Um, but I think St. Louis is going to pull it out. They show me that their defensive line they wreaked havoc on Russell Wilson. I think they can do the same on Jake Locker. Uh, that's why I'm going with St. Louis is going to defeat Tennessee. Yeah, I, I have the Rams as well. I'm kind of bummed you didn't take the Titans. Um, I think that Kellen Clemens, as bad as he played, he showed that he can at least run some sort of an offense. Yes. Um, he, he, they're, they're, let's put it this way. They could definitely be a worse backup, a, mm-hmm. i.e. Josh Freeman. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the Rams are in good hands. They are at home. Um, they just you, you hit the nail on the head. they got to figure out what to do when they're running the football. Mm-hmm. Um, but they but they hung in there. If their defense hung in there like they did against the Seahawks, 
Um, I, I think that they should be fine. I they, they they can win this game by two touchdowns just because the Titans are a mess. So, yes. So um, I'm gonna also go with the Rams. Um, not not convincingly. No, 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 no. Um, it's probably one of the harder harder games to pick, but I will go with the Rams as well. Yeah, uh, Zach Stacy ran for a career high 134 yards on 26 carries against Seattle, a good defense, and Tennessee lets up 117 rushing yards per game. So I think St. Louis they can pull this one out and get a dub without Sam Bradford. Uh, but moving forward, let's game let's get to a game I think is another pretty easy one that I don't think is going to be that competitive. We got the New York Jets uh, hosting the New Orleans Saints. Um, the Jets coming off of an embarrassing loss to the Cincinnati Bengals when everyone thought after they beat the Patriots that this is going to be a big game for them to tell the NFL that they're a legit playoff team, and then a good team trounces them. Uh, and then the Saints are coming in who are better than the Bengals, and they're coming in uh, to, 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 uh, to face New York, and I think it's just an easy one. you got to go with the Saints. Yeah, definitely. I am not going to pick the Jets. Um, I, re- I don't think anybody really has the... Uh the, the the cojones to kind of pick the Jets this week. Uh, after losing my 40 to the Bengals, you have Drew Brees and Jimmy Graham coming in. Um, just just it, It's going to be ugly. Their offense is too good. I don't care how good the Jets' defense is. I think Drew Brees is going to find a way to throw for over 300 yards. Mm-hmm. Geno Smith came out this week and said that he needs to be better. Um, and with a, with a underrated Saints defense, I think they're going to have tr- uh, trouble scoring. Um, Chris Ivory has played well for the Jets the uh, past couple weeks yes. uh, on, the, on the ground. Um, but I really don't see um, Drew Brees losing at MetLife Stadium. Uh, I think him, the connection with him and Graham has been great. I Unfortunately, he needs to throw to Marcus Colson a little bit because he has been a disappointment for my fantasy team. And for me to beat Stanko, Colson needs to go off. Um, <laughs> So, but yeah, I think uh, this is this has two. This has a seventeen point win written all over it. Yeah, uh, the Saints ranked fourth in the NFL with a plus eight turnover ratio, uh, and that's that's Rob Ryan creating turnovers. Um, so you know what? Listen, um, Drew Brees is only two and two in his career against New York, but this team is so talented. And if the Jets allow Marvin Jones, a nobody, to score four touchdowns, what's going to happen with all the weapons New Orleans has? Very true. This so, this is an easy one. I think you got to go with New Orleans, even though they're not in the Dome. I think they beat the Jets pretty handily. Well, heading, into, heading into this next game, we have the San Diego Chargers' Johnny Stank with your boy, Phillip Rivers. going. Not to, my boy. Not my boy. Definitely not mine either. Uh, going into Washington to face RG3 and the Redskins. Redskins coming off a loss to the Broncos. Mm-hmm. Um, and who They were in that game. They were. They were in the game. Um, Chargers have surprised many people as well with wins against the wins like how they did against the Colts. Um, Johnny Stank, what do you got? Oh, uh, this is this is really a tough game for me to pick because the first half Washington looked really good against Denver. Their defense really kept Peyton down. Um, but with that being said, San Diego um, Ryan Matthews is running like he's never run before. He, I think he has three straight hundred yard rushing games. Danny Woodhead is a passing option out of the backfield that the Chargers haven't had since Darren Sproles. Um, I'm going to go with San Diego in a tight one. Um, it's, I think it's going to be pretty high scoring again. Uh, but RG3 is playing better, but Phillip Rivers is still playing possibly the best football of his career right now. And that's why I'm going to give the slight edge to the Chargers. It's going to be our first disagreement. I'm going to go with the Redskins this game. I am. Ooh. I think. Um, I think, first of all, the Redskins are due. I think that they're home and they Washington is a tough place to play. I think that the Chargers have been playing well, but they're finally going to play like how they're supposed to be playing. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think they're playing above the kind of above the mark right now, mm-hmm. and um, you can only do that with a so-so football team for so long. Mm-hmm. And honestly, that's what the Chargers are. I think they're just an okay football team. They'll go as far as Rivers can go, but Rivers can only do so much. So I'm going to go with the Redskins um, tentatively. Uh, tentatively, tentatively. I, this might be another one of those, oh, Ritz, Ritz switched on Sunday. But um, as of right now, I'm going to go with the Redskins. I think that them being at home uh, plays a big part in this. And I really don't think the Chargers are going to – you're going to tell me they're going to go 5-3? and three? Yes, I am. I, I really – Yes, I, I am. I the wild card is looking good for San Diego. Oh, God. And I, it's, it's sad that I have to pick the Redskins. I really I – really, I hope the Chargers win, honestly, but – I really don't see it. I think the uh, I think the Redskins are gonna are gonna are gonna take this one probably by probably by six. I would say it's gonna be twenty six twenty one of those types of games. Mm-hmm. I could see that. But Johnny Stank, this next game we have the Atlanta Falcons 
who Stanko stupidly picked last week. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, just breaking your chat. <laughs> Going into Carolina to take on the Panthers. Honestly, I think it was the first week last week on Sunday uh, on uh, Thursday that I got the, a Panthers game right yeah. um, when they played the Buccaneers. Um, Panthers, they beat up on the bad teams. Yes. But they lose to the good teams. And they're going up against a Falcons team who everyone thinks is good, but they're old. they only have two wins. Stanko, who do you got? Uh, the Falcons aren't a good team. I'm going with Carolina. Fired. They oh, are God not fired. a good team right now. There's no bones about it. They have not played well. You have to beat the Cardinals if you're the Falcons. You have more talent than them, and you still couldn't do it. Uh, I'm I'm really embarrassed if I'm a Falcons fan as, how, of, as to how the season has gone. Um, listen, Matt Ryan, he's playing okay, but their defense is not playing well. And listen, Cam Newton's playing really, really well of late. So that's why, and listen, D'Angelo Williams is running the ball well. Um, Juan Rivera, is, he's coaching for his job. And right now the team is performing for him. And I'm going to go with Carolina in a division win over the Falcons. And I would not be surprised to see the Falcons finish third in this division, only above Tampa Bay. Shots fired. I mean, I'm going with the Panthers as well. There's nothing that I can say to convince myself to pick the Falcons exactly. this, this week. They're not playing at home. They're playing a Carolina team who has played okay, has played pretty well. Um, and I think Cam Newton is has has finally bounced back and is starting to play like his old self again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really don't think the Falcons are good on the road. I think that's a big problem. And when, when you're not a good road team and then all of a sudden you can't win at home either, there's a problem. Yeah. Um, Matt Ryan has played okay, but they're just too banged up. I think I think eventually that, I think that's what it is. Um, they were talking about Mike Smith and if his yeah, you know, I was gonna ask getting you. a little warm. Uh, I think you, you got to give him, you might got to give him a pass at least this season because he has um, cause he has players banged up. I wouldn't be surprised if they got rid of him this season only because he, he has shown that he can take teams to the playoffs but not win it. Mm-hmm. So I think with that, obviously caused frustration, but this type of performance this season, that might be uh, the straw that broke the camel's back here for Mike Smith. But I'm going to go with Carolina. Yeah, I, I think last week's game against Arizona officially ended any hope the Falcons had of the playoffs. I think it officially ended it. Uh, sad to see Tony Gonzalez go away on a team that isn't winning, um, because t- Tony Gonzalez, one of the best receivers ever, is, isn't, isn't going to go out on top. Um, but I think you have to go with Carolina. Um, and poor Atlanta. So many people picked them for the Super Bowl, and how do they feel now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How do they feel now? <laughs> exactly. It's, it's tough. But, uh, another tough game. I'm still angry at the Oakland Raiders, because... If it wasn't for them, your boy would have would have been thirteen and zero last week. Your boy yeah. would have been perfect. Yeah. But they just had to go mess up, beat the Steelers last week. They're taking on Philly at Oakland. Johnny Stink, two pretty bad teams. What do you got? The black hole is going to prevail. <laughs> uh, Terrell Pryor uh, is going to outplay whatever quarterback plays for Philadelphia. Because uh, I think it is Foles. I think it's Foles as well. Mike Vick still hurt his hamstring. We were saying, why would you run a 100-yard dash last week to test out your hamstring? And then he heard it in the game, didn't play the second half. Um, he says the worst hamstring injury he's ever had. That doesn't bode well for the future. I think Chip Kelly knows he doesn't have his future starting quarterback on the roster now uh, with Nick Foles and Mike Vick and Matt Barkley. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, listen, Terrell Pryor, he broke, remember that 93-yard run against Pittsburgh? First play from scrimmage. That's the playmaker ability that Oakland has with him. Listen, Oakland's not a great team, but they can they can make big plays happen. Terrell Pryor is the key to that. And the Eagles' defense allows big plays. So that's why I'm going to go with Oakland. And what happened to this Philadelphia defense that was so great? Deshaun McCoy hasn't rushed for over 100 yards in, I think, it's three weeks. Uh, he hasn't really done that much. Um, it's I think it's going to be, I think, Eagles are going to try and get back to their normal thing, which is give Deshaun McCoy the ball in space. But I don't think they're going to be able to stop Terrell Pryor in Oakland. I completely agree. I have the Raiders as well. Um, the Eagles have played so bad and um, much, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. The Giants beat them last week. In a, in a much, much needed game for us. Yes, um, yes. But Terrell Pryor has been playing uh, at least decent enough to at least give me uh, some sort of confidence of, of them playing at home. Yep. Darren McFadden got into the end zone last week, which is always good to see. Um, and, I, I mean, let, let's see. I mean, I, I really, I could see Philly, their offense breaking out because of Oakland defense. Again, this this Oakland, is, I'm not yeah. saying Oakland's for sure going to win. Yeah. But I looking at this, I, it's a 50-50 game, but I'm, 
I'm going with Oakland. I think that's the easy, yeah. easy decision. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think them being at home, them coming up a good win against the Steelers, um, Eagles haven't. I think the Eagles have scored seven points uh, in two weeks. Um, yeah. Oh, ten points in two ten weeks. Ten points they in two weeks. Three and seven at home. Now they got to go on the road and play. Yeah, I got. I, I. I have Oakland as well. Well, look at this Oakland schedule. Looking forward, you got Philadelphia. You got the New York Giants. You got Houston. You got Tennessee. Dallas and New York Jets. You don't have any super duper good teams in that mix right now, uh, but you got teams that are looking to make moves like Dallas, and you got the Jets, and right now the anyone in the A in the NFC East, so even New York, they're gonna try and make moves. You already know the Raiders might be playing spoiler because they're not they're not as bad as they have been, and they're, this part of the schedule you got some fifty fifty teams that the Oakland's gonna battle with. Yeah, and this is the type of game here this week that they're gonna have to win these these. This is these 50-50 games that they're going to run into. Um, but from what it sounds like, they're playing a lot of teams that have a lot to lose. Yes. Which, um, which I almost doesn't bode well for Oakland. Yeah. Because um, they got to they gotta play teams who need to win just like they to, um, just like they have to. Especially the Jets and the Giants. They're, they're, they're going to have to win every week now. Yep. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, at least for this week, Philly's offense has not done anything for me to, to try to be like, you know what, this is going to be different. I'm going to go with the Oakland. We agree on that one. Uh, but let's go to possibly the lock of the week. I think we both agree. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have Tampa Bay uh, going to CenturyLink, playing Seattle, a Seattle team that didn't play well against St. Louis, and they're going to want to bounce back. But they did lose Sidney Rice, but is Percy Harvin returning? Returning? Uh, that, I mean, that, that's the big question. I think... Uh, the bigger question is, is Seattle going to cover the 16.5-point spread? <laughs> I think um, they will. <laughs> yeah. Tampa Bay is so bad. I don't care who's not playing for Seattle. Marshawn Lynch didn't do anything last week, um, which was a big reason why they only scored 14 points. Yeah. Um, I, I see him try, uh, bouncing back, playing well. I think uh, I think they're playing at home, so their defense is going to show up. But I, I think that it just proves that Seattle, I've been saying it all, all season, Seattle is a different team on the road. Russell Wilson is eleven and zero at home in his career. He's seven and six now, eight and six in his career on the road. He he plays different on the road too. Um, so that's like the only reason why everyone's talking about Seattle being the best team in football. I really don't have them being, but um, but them playing at home against the Buccaneers, it's going to get ugly. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Russell Wilson was sacked seven times against uh, the Rams, and that's because they're missing both their starting tackles, and they got to get them back. Uh, but with that being said, I think Marshawn Lynch is going to bounce back. And if Percy Harvin returns, this offense is going to be electric because based off what everyone's saying in practice, he's quicker and he's still really fast. And you, if you have the beast mode, Marshawn Lynch pounding people and you got the speed of Percy Harvin, it's a dangerous weapon. Well, for the Prater haters' sake, my fantasy team, Marshawn Lynch <laughs> is going to have to go off. So let's hope you're right, Johnny. Stanley. Let's hope it's a blow that he doesn't play the second half. Oh, no, 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 no. They're going to have to, <laughs> they're gonna have to run football all, all, all second half. All they're second half. Run, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. Well, a team that needs to start running the ball, I think, more is the New England Patriots. They're going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers at home. Uh, the Steelers coming off the loss to Oakland. Um, but you got New England coming off the second half victory against Miami because you can't say they won the first half because they played awful. Um, but Tom Brady still has yet to throw a touchdown pass to Gronk. He had an opportunity, but it was called back due to a holding penalty. Uh, who do you got? The New England Patriots hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's no way the Patriots are going to lose this game. There's no way. Um, New England at home, Brady needs to bounce back mm-hmm. off of uh, a couple... You can't say that Brady has been playing well. Stanley he's he's, been, he's, he's having the worst season of his career. One of the worst seasons of his career. It's, I don't know if it's a combination of him just getting up there, the players that he has around him, um, him and Belichick, or the whole Gronk thing. It could be a, it could be anything. Or the lack of run game that they've had. Um, but at home, the Patriots are very tough to play. Pittsburgh, who has been shaky, they just lost to the Raiders. Um, obviously a, a, a game that they could have won. Yep, they should have um, won. Big Ben has been play- the Steelers have been playing better, but they aren't going to be, I, they're not going to play well enough to beat the Patriots on the road. Yeah, uh, that's why I'm going with New England as well. Uh, New England just has to protect Brady. Uh, Sebastian Vollmer's out now with a broken leg. The Steelers only have 10 sacks on the year, which is second lowest in the NFL, but they're still a good defense. Uh, you can't, you can't sleep on them. And the Steelers can't sleep on Brady, even though he's not having, not putting up his usual numbers. Um, the listen, Stephen Ridley is so much better. Or the Patriots' offense is so much better when Stephen Ridley's on the field, and yet he doesn't start. It's usually Brandon Bolton, the first running back, that's in the backfield. 
But I think you got to start Stephen Ridley. Feed him the ball. Get the play action going. Because play action, get a Gronkowski on a seam route. It's one of the toughest things to defend in football. So that's that. That's I think has to be the Patriots game plan because if you get in third and long situations against the Steelers, uh, the Steelers defense, you're not going to get first downs, and the Patriots are struggling enough with that already. Yeah, I, this is a uh, this is a big game for the Patriots. I think it's kind of a obviously it's not a not a, not a rivalry game or it's just a game that the Patriots just need to play well just so uh, for future weeks. They can kind of build off this win because uh, a lot of people are doubting your Patriots right now. Listen, I'm doubting my Patriots right now. <laughs> I'm doubting them. Oh yeah, def- most definitely. All right, we got uh, we got the Indianapolis Colts coming off of a bye in a division game. Stick, you skipped the game. Did I skip we got the, game? the Baltimore Ravens. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We got the Baltimore Ravens going into Cleveland, where I'm going to go ahead and say the Cleveland Browns are going to beat the Ravens oh. in Cleveland. Oh. I think this is going to be my upset. I guess you can count as an upset pick. Um, it's because I have I have not had any confidence in the Ravens whatsoever. Nor and let's 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 face it, the Browns have surprised people this season so far. Yep. The Browns have they they played pretty well against the Chiefs last week. They um they have played well at home. They surprised everybody. They have a Baltimore team who can't run the ball. Who Flacco's playing so so. Mm-hmm. Uh, their defense is playing so so. So, Stengel, why would you pick Baltimore? Because Baltimore has beaten Cleveland 11 straight times. So what? It, they're different teams. Uh, the same team has played each other 11 straight times? I don't think so. <laughs> no, it's not. But I think Baltimore is coming off of a bye. Harbaugh is a good coach. I think that they're going to come with a game plan. Because if you stop, I think, listen, Cleveland, they're not going to put up a ton of points. If you keep them to 10 points, I think... Baltimore has enough uh, has enough to get 13 points on the board to get it's going to be a tight game. Can I see Cleveland winning? Yes. You already know. But I think that coming off of a bye, you got to go got to give Baltimore the slight edge. Uh, their defense only allows 16 and a half points per game and again Cleveland doesn't put up that many points. Uh, so you know what? That's why I'm going to go it's a, it's it's really close, but I'm giving a 3-point win to Baltimore. It's going to be like 13-10 or like 17-14. <laughs> Yeah, I I definitely agree with the score. I just I just agree with the team. I think it's going to be a uh, a low scoring game. I just think both. I just have no faith in Baltimore at all. Credit to Jason Campbell for playing well last week, though, yes. for the Browns. Oh yeah, definitely. so that does give the Browns a little bit of an edge. Uh, this is a really tough game, but uh, I'm going to go with Baltimore just because they they've won 11 straight times. They're coming off a bye, and Joe Flacco for the one time in my life, I'm trusting you. <laughs> Don't let me down. Your boy sticking his neck out with Pretty that. please. <laughs> boy sticking Pretty his neck please. out with the Browns pick. Uh, one, one game that I'm not going to stick my neck out in is this Colts and Houston game. Now we'll get uh, to this game. Now, yeah, now, Stengel really wanted to get to this game. Um, you got the Colts going into Houston. Um, the struggling, struggling Houston Texans. The, the mess that they've been. Mm-hmm. A healthy Matt Shop, <laughs> who is not starting this nope. game, Stanko. That's probably the biggest headline. Um, for me, it's Colts, Andrew Luck playing against a terrible Houston team. I'm just simply picking the Colts. But Stengel, what do you think about this whole Shop thing? Shop's career is over. Oh, man. He's n- oh, my God. Listen, I don't think he's going to play the rest of the season. I think... You think his career is over? Who's going to want him? I, I'm pretty sure there are um, at least a couple of teams okay. in the NFL. Okay, let me just say this then. He's, you know, like in Houston, he was guaranteed starts. He's okay. no longer guaranteed right. to start anywhere. He's gonna have to compete anywhere he goes to get to make the roster and make the start and make the starting lineup. Okay. I mean, listen, there there are teams that need him. You got Tampa Bay might need a quarterback. You got teams that are that are struggling that need a quarterback. I mean, Minnesota, but he's gonna have to compete. And he listen on the field, he has shown why he doesn't deserve to start. He played awful before his injury, and I think credit to Houston for moving on. Though I think this is also the end of Gary Kubiak. I think they go together. It's definitely, yeah. Kubiak's definitely gone. Uh, but with that being said, good for Case Keenum getting the start. And bye-bye, Matt Schaub. Thank God. Good riddance. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fan of Matt Schaub. Even, yeah, he is. He just he just looks like he doesn't know wh- which way is up. No. Um, I want to see Trent Richardson go off. I have, I'm waiting for Trent Richardson to go off. And this might be the week. I really think... Uh, I really think this might be the week. I think, but I think Andrew Luck's too good. The Colts are too good. So uh, Sunday night, I think it's a pretty good Sunday night game. Still, a game that you should at least tune into. Um, for Case Keenum's sake, that's that's, that's, that's yeah, what I'm going to tune in for. Think of Case Keenum, um, but yeah. So means go definitely agree. Yeah, the Houston's a mess, 
And we're going to go with Indy. That being said, though, I just want to give one stat just for it on ESPN.com. Arian Foster dominates Indianapolis, getting 750 yards and averaging 6.5 yards a carry in five meetings. Details, details. Details, details, details. details. <laughs> uh, go, the Monday night game. A pretty good Monday night game. Yes. Um, you have the uh, rivalry game. The Bears are going into Lambeau to take on the Packers. Jay Cutler not playing. Um, he is banged up. Mm-hmm. Still with his groin injury. He's killing me. And uh, on my fantasy team. But, uh, but Stanko, the Packers are also banged up. Yes. Um, so this is, everyone's saying, oh, the Bears do not have Cutler, but the Packers don't have anybody else. Stanko, who do you have? Uh, if this game was in Chicago, I'd be tempted to pick the Bears, but it's in Lambeau. And that's really the only thing I could say because I think these two teams are pretty evenly matched. Uh, McCown... Listen, he's in there for Cutler, but McCown showed when he came in he can play, and that the Bears have played with him before. Um, and I think another thing that gives the edge is that Eddie Lacy is running well for Green Bay. Uh, I think Eddie Lacy and Matt Forte, it's going to be, I think, an underrated running back showdown, uh, I think, on Monday night. Um, Eddie Lacy ran for 94 yards last week, um, and he's, he's averaging almost 100 yards over his past four games. So he's playing really, really well, and I think Aaron Rodgers benefits from that. Uh, but... With that being said, if Chicago can force turnovers like they usually do, they they have a chance to win. And if Devin Hester, I think I believe he turned a uh, punt return for a touchdown last time the Bears played. I think the Bears might need to play like that to spark something. But I'm gonna go with Green Bay. But it's gonna be a physical, testy, great Monday night game to watch. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's a, one of the better Monday night games. Finally, uh, yeah, I I agree with you when you said about Matt Forte um, and how he's been he has been playing well. Uh, the the running back showdown is is definitely going to be uh, it's underrated because Eddie Lacy has been playing well. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the Packers as well. Um, the fact that it's in Lambeau helps out a little bit. I think um, as good as McCown has at least shown that he that he could be. I mean he, he I don't he can't keep up with Rodgers obviously. James Jones is expected to be back this week. Um, Very good so news it's for another, the Packers. It's 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 just another receiver for the Packers. One last thing to worry about alone to go with Jordy Nelson. Um, who, who who went off last week, which, I mean, when you're the only receiver, you know, that th- things like that happen. But if James Jones comes back, opens it up a little more for Eddie Lacy, opens up a little more for Jordy, um, the Packers can get uh, into their offensing spurt that they're, th- that they're used to. So I'm, I'm just hoping up as well. Boykins comes in, comes in big for the Packers for my fans. Oh, you got Boykin say. too? Oh, it's yep. going to get ugly. <laughs> <laughs> get ugly this week. We'll see what happens. Mike Ritz, uh, we're going up against in Fancy this week. We're going up against in the podcast here. We disagree on two games. You have the Cleveland Browns with You're the no. upset over yep. the Baltimore Ravens. And then you have the Washington Redskins in an even matchup, I'd say, against San Diego. Uh, so we disagree there. We'll see who will come out on top. Um, again, I am 79 and 41. I am tied with Merrill Hodge, um, <laughs> on the expert picks from ESPN. Uh, you are 78 and 42. You're tied with, uh, Wickerson, Wickersman, who I don't even know from ESPN. Um, <laughs> and you're tied with Ditka. Oh, God. <laughs> so, neither of us have great match. Neither of us have great pairings there. Uh, but it's it, it's going to be an interesting week, and I'm glad to see there's a good Monday night game finally. Yeah, finally. There's <laughs> we went through the whole Monday night segment. Yep. There, it, promising, promising. Later in the season. later on in the season, there are some s- severe playoff implicating showdowns on Monday night. Mm-hmm. But that's all the time we got here for the podcast. John Stanko, Mike. Happy Ritz. Halloween. And happy Halloween. How could I forget? That's right. Uh, but I want to thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And tune in next week as well. Enjoy week nine.